Hi there. I just listened to the delivery from the Weaver uh, supply for today. Uh, for the saddle I'm starting now. Um, the working cover saddle the tree here is the, from Warren Wright from New Zealand and uh, it's the wooden tree covered with raw hide. It's the, the oldest the traditional method of making trees and all the most custom tree makers and saddle makers they prefer this way because simply it works. It's a uh, it has the best weight, strength and flexibility ratio uh, comparing to the other materials, the new materials. Of course the new materials they are cheaper to make. That's why they're pushing them. Um, this tree will cost 700 euros or 600 euros and some cheaper trees they are from two three hundred euros so you get what you pay for um, I try to use the best materials possible same with the leather I'm using the Herman oak leather this is the chestnut dyed from the factory I use two sides of 13 to 15 ounce skirting for each side maybe even three sides depending on the size of the saddle and the accessories so it's the I find the leather the best I ever seen and I worked with and it looks beautiful when it's oiled it lasts long and it has very tight grain tight fibers so I stick to the best um, then on, as a lining for the saddle I use the sheepskin you can see it's a 14 square feet uh, shearling sheepskin a bark tent so it it gives a very good um, cushion to the saddle to the horse and uh, lasts much longer than the polyester and it's better heat control uh, it doesn't overheat the horse especially with a wood, uh, wooden blanket so I am very traditional and it works for me so that's what I use um, here I have the kangaroo lacing, it's uh, now cut in 3 eighths of an inch and I use it for lacing my skirts, I use it for lacing my latigos and um, they have much higher strength in the same thickness as the cowhide so it doesn't have the bulk but it has the strength so it makes a very nice braiding job uh, the latigos this is one for the near side, it's the uh, six foot long and then for the off side I use the, the off fillet it's about three, three foot long and um, it's a chrome vegetable repaint uh, latigo same with the strings, I cut them from the same, same side um, so they are about 10-11 ounces thick and I split them down to about 7-8 ounces for the, for the saddle strings and they are half an inch wide uh, so then for the hardware I use only stainless steel so for some buckles I use brass as well but preferably stainless steel it is the strongest it doesn't rust and doesn't it's not as soft as, 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 as brass so it holds the shape and this is a polished stainless steel ring, uh, D rings this is for the front that's for the the back view. Then we have the blavins buckles, also the preferred type of buckles using for changing the, the steel blank. This is the brass version. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the, the aluminium, but it lasts longer. Um, the aluminium, especially here in Ireland, uh, I've seen it, it just doesn't last. So with stainless steel sleeves. The Blevins. Here are the two options. I still have to decide which one I'm gonna use for the uh, brass color. These, these ones, they go between the layers of the of the leather, and these go on top. I usually put them on the uh, latigo holders, and these can be also used in the back of the saddle, underneath the ponchos, to attach some other some way things for packing or so. And talking about ponchos. This saddle will be square skirted, so I decided to put the square conchos, these are beautiful conchos, on this saddle. 
and uh, it is the same style in the round version which goes underneath the bullet here so check the conscience again stainless steel polish stainless steel buckles pretty simple but functional um, these are the buckles for the mohair cinch and the mohair yarn mohair is natural material doesn't shrink from moisture it's it's very strong but it also allows the horse to breathe because it's flexible uh, the way the cinch is, is braided and here are just a couple of nails I use and these are just simple galvanized nails I just use during the process of making the sandal so I can easily take them out but if I'm going to use the snails that, that stay in the saddle I use uh, the stainless steel ring chain nails so they hold very well or brass if I want to have it exposed for example here underneath the gullet sometimes I use the brass as well 10 screws again stainless steel number 10 uh, wood screws this is a countersink head or I use the flat head for the attaching the, uh, the rigging different length this is one and a half inch and uh, use one one and a quarter and one and a half inch screws and rivets I use number nine copper rivets so this is pretty much oh yeah we have the of course the oil I use a hundred percent need for the oil for finishing the saddle and uh, this is the saddle butter from uh, a company uh, by uh, Ray Holtz. So this I use after the oil, especially on if it's with the contact with the horse. I put more coats so the sweat from the horse doesn't go through the leather uh, too quickly and prolongs the life of the leather. So always use some kind of conditioner beeswax. I don't like to use uh, spray on finishes because they don't really. It either doesn't breathe, and if it breathes, it doesn't really protect. So, this will protect the leather very well. It you can buff it with beautiful shine, and it's an all-natural product. It's basically just beeswax and many oils. So this is the glue I'm using: Serenia Top Fit Contact Adhesive. Made in Germany, it's very very strong, flexible. And they also sell, sell the thinners, so I can thin it down if I want to. So this is approximately everything I use for each saddle. Of course, uh, I don't have the stirrups here with me. Uh, I'm going to use for the saddle, they're going to be two inch model stirrups on this saddle. And uh, they're on the way. So yeah, it's about 1500, 1500 euros on this table going into this saddle. I try to use the best materials possible for each saddle and uh, make the best saddle possible. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment below and you can subscribe my channel. I'm going to be adding some more videos of making the saddle and making other things as well. If you like this video, you can hit the like button. So thanks for the watching.